C Corporation Constructive Distributions Problem 1. Coconut, an individual, is the sole shareholder of Tropical Fruit Corporation, a U.S.-based corporation. Coconut also owns the office building that serves as corporate headquarters for Tropical Fruit Corporation. Last year, Tropical Fruit Corporation paid $200,000 annual rent to Coconut for use of the building. Tropical Fruit Corporation's marginal tax rate was 21% and Coconut's marginal tax rate on ordinary income was 37%. Also, Coconut's qualified dividend rate was 20%. The revenue agent who audited Tropical Fruit Corporation's return concluded that the fair rental value of the office building was $150,000. Compute the increase or decrease in Coconut's income tax liability and the combined amount of income tax liability for Coconut and Tropical Fruit Corporation as a result of this audit conclusion. All right, so we have a constructed distribution question. Sometimes they're referred to as constructive dividends. The technical Quite, the technical name, though, is constructive distribution because the distribution then has to go through the dividend return of capital, capital gain distribution analysis that we look at in corporate operations. But we have a constructive distribution question. We know because we're told about an audit conclusion, and we usually see this when it comes to compensation of a, um, a shareholder or rent that's being paid when um, the IRS might consider it a distribution. A distribution. Now, Last year, Tropical Fruit Corporation paid $200,000 annual rent to Coconut for the use of the building. And the IRS basically says, well, we actually think the fair rental value is $150,000. So that difference, that that difference, $200,000 minus $150,000, that $50,000 over the fair rental amount, over the fair rental amount, basically we're viewing that as a constructive distribution constructive distribution constructive distribution that's really what's going on here that's really what's going on here so we need to start we're looking really at two things we're looking at the effect to coconut because coconut of course took in the um, amount of of rent and coconut basically recorded two hundred thousand dollars of rental income two hundred thousand dollars of rental income which rental income is subject to ordinary tax rates. So it's subject to the ordinary marginal tax rates. So it's subject to ordinary marginal tax rates. And basically what's going on here is the IRS is coming in saying, okay, well, we think $150,000 is rental and $50,000 is considered a constructive distribution. Constructive distribution. That's actually what we call them. Now I'll talk about why I think it would be treated as a dividend in a moment, um, ultimately, but really it's called constructive distributions. If you hear someone say constructive dividend, same topic, same idea, but they're making an assumption that you have enough earnings and profits for the distribution to be treated as that. Now some of you might be wondering why does this even matter? Because many of you know distributions and dividends aren't deductible by the corporation, but rental, rental amount paid by the corporation to Coconut, that is a deduction. That is a deduction. So you're going to see the benefits to coconut are actually going to be better than before the um, this change in terms of the IRS. They're actually coconut's going to save money, but when then when you view it together, coconut and tropical fruit corporation, you're going to see that there's it's actually a loss in terms um, and together because the corporation's not going to get the benefit of the deduction and you know for double tax purposes for for calculating the entity level taxation and that's going to make some differences there so that's really what's going to happen so what we do here is let's start with coconut so we need to compute the increase or decrease in coconuts income tax liability let's start there let's just start there and then we'll do the second part in a moment so that's where we're starting i'll do that over here on this side we just did that so two hundred thousand dollars of rental income that's that's what we have. And the, and the taxable income to coconut stays the same. We still have $200,000 of ordinary income. The difference, though, is that the $150,000 of rental income is subject to a tax rate of 37%. And the $50,000 constructive distribution is subject to a 20% rate. Subject to a 20% rate. So let's go ahead and let's calculate that. So let's take $150,000, which is the rental income. This is what the IRS is saying should have happened. Multiply that by 37%. You get $55,500. $55,500. Then we're going to take the $50,000 constructive distribution, which let's just assume in this problem that we have plenty of earnings and profits. We'll say we have plenty 
of EMP, earnings and profits. And if you have lots of earnings and profits, that distribution, that constructive distribution, it turns into a constructive dividend. And again, as I mentioned, people just make that assumption because there's lots of EMP. We'll assume that we have it. So 50,000 times 20%, that's going to be $10,000. And these arrows I have down here, these are the um, audited results, the audited conclusion, the change, the IRS audited change, we'll call it. So this is what originally it was $200,000 of rental income, all ordinary. And we changed it. The IRS is saying, no, $150,000 is rental income. And then $50,000 is constructive distribution, which is, again, we, we're assuming plenty of earnings and profits. So it will be treated as a constructive distribution or constructive dividend subject to a 20% rate. If we add up these two amounts, if we sum these two amounts, 55,500 plus $10,000, that's going to equal $65,500 of taxes that Coconut will have to pay under the IRS audit change result. Under the IRS audit change result. Now, if we take the $20,000 of rental income and we multiply that by the 37% rate, which is originally, that is the old way that Coconut was doing it. That was the original way that Coconut reported it, $200,000 of rental income. If we take $200,000 and we multiply that by 37%, we're going to get $74,000. $74,000. So as you can see, the IRS is changing this and it's looking better for Coconut because on the old result, the old way, before the change by the IRS, $74,000 of taxes were had to be paid, and now Coconut only has to pay $65,500. So if we're, comp if we're trying to determine the increase or decrease, we know it's going to be a decrease. So Coconut has to pay less taxes on Coconut's return. So the decrease in taxes by Coconut, with respect to Coconut, we take the $74,000, the old, we subtract away the $65,500 in taxes, and we're going to get $8,500, a decrease in taxes, $8,500, a decrease in taxes of $8,500, $8,500. And you're saying, well, okay, we're done. We're done, right? This is good. This is good. Well, hold on right there because we have to not only consider Coconut's income tax liability change, which we determined it's a decrease in taxes of $8,500. We did that. Now we have to consider the combined effect. You're like, okay, what do you mean combined? Well, as I mentioned earlier, when we go from changing from changing the $200,000 of rental income to now 55,000, I'm sorry, 150,000 rental income and 50,000 constructive distribution, the corporation is going to lose, is going to have is going to basically have to pay more in taxes because now they have to, they they don't get the full deduction. That $50,000 change so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do more of a differential approach for the corporation. So that $50,000 change, which is the $200,000 of rent under the old approach minus the IRS is audited, which is only $150,000 in rent. That results in a $50,000 change. So the corporation cannot deduct $50,000. See that the corporation does not get that tax benefit. So before they were taking a deduction for $200,000, that's what the old was. The IRS is saying, no, you can't do that. You must deduct $150,000. That $50,000 constructive dis distribution, which we would determine again, we assume there's lots of earnings and profits and now it's a dividend. Remember in the corporate tax law, you don't get a deduction for that. That's not a deduction on the tax return, unless it's a dividend receive deduction, but Coconut is an individual here. Ah, oh, yes. Has to be a C corporation owning an RC corporation for one uh, corporation to get a deduction of the dividends. That's that's the receiving corporation. So that would be Coconut, but Coconut's an individual. Coconut's not a C corporation receiving um, a dividend from another C corporation. Okay, so keep that in mind. So we have a $50,000 change that, w that basically... The corporation cannot deduct. Tropical Fruit Corporation cannot deduct this. So we're going to take the corporate tax rate of 21%. We're going to multiply it by that $50,000 change, the amount that the corporation does not get the benefit by deducting. And what we're going to result in, what the amount is going to be, it's going to be $10,500 of tax increase. 
of tax increase, tax increase. And that is going to be the effect to the corporation of this. Okay. Because remember, there's two levels of tax. This is the second level. That's what we just determined for coconut. And then the first level, the effect we just did for the corporation is the corporation is, um, on the entity level. So there's going to be a $10,500 increase to the corporation. Now the question is staying in the combined. So if I asked you what is the increase or decrease to coconut, it'd be $8,500 decrease in taxes. If I asked you for the increase or decrease to the corporation, it'd be $10,500 in taxes. But we're asked for, sorry, tax increase. And we're asked for the combined. Combining, considering, because this is a sole shareholder. Coconut ultimately compares or cares about the combined amount. Combined, when you're considering both the corporation and the and the uh, shareholder coconut, we're going to take the $10,500 increase in taxes and we're going to net it, or we're going to subtract because it's a decrease, the $8,500 decrease that coconut gets. And we subtract the two numbers and we get $2,000 and then we take whatever, whichever number is the greater, right? The 10,500 is the greater. So it's going to be an increase. It's going to be a $2,000 increase in taxes that is the combined effect in taxes. To a $2,000 increase in taxes, that is the combined amount. So we've gone through everything, we've gone through the shareholder effect, we've gone through the corporation, and then ultimately, boom, we answered the combined amount.